There are four methods in which the NICOM monitor can assist the clinician in determining whether a patient is likely to respond to the administration of fluids with an increase in stroke volume, cardiac output, and organ perfusion. The four methods include a fluid challenge test, a passive leg raise test, assessment of the stroke volume index, and assessment of the stroke volume variability. If you determine that you want to give a volume bolus to the patient and you want to have the NICOM evaluate the change, you would select Menu, Protocols, Bolus Test. It says, Question, would you like to start immediately from the challenge stage? If you're ready to give your bolus, you select Yes. And then it says, challenge, start the bolus injection. In order to stop the bolus test and view its results, go to protocols and select end bolus test. So right now you would hit next, open up the stopcock and start your bolus. And if you can note here that the clock will start to count up. With the start of the test, a timer appears in the upper right corner of the screen to record the elapsed time. A bolus challenge test will indicate the percent change in hemodynamics following an intervention. The intervention could be an intravenous fluid challenge or the response to an infusion of vasoactive medication. A rapid intravenous infusion of approximately 4 mils per kilogram or about 250 to 400 mils in an average adult over 3 to 5 minutes is recommended as a challenge. In the setting of unstable hemodynamics, the challenge test may not be useful an assessment of the SVV or SVI may be more appropriate. Alternatively, the challenge test can be used to assess the response to an infusion of vasoactive medication. Go, go okay. In order to end the bolus, you would want to go in, select Menu, Protocols, End Bolus Test. The bolus test report is displayed when the test is completed. The table rows indicate the baseline challenge, and percent change in the cardiac index, heart rate, and stroke volume index. An increase of more than 10% in the stroke volume index is considered significant and suggests that the intervention was beneficial. In this patient, the SVI was essentially unchanged following the intervention. There is an insignificant increase in the cardiac index related to a slight increase in heart rate during the test period. A passive leg raise test can be used to assess fluid responsiveness in the perioperative period. The patient is placed in a semi-upright position with the head of the bed elevated 45 degrees. Baseline hemodynamics are collected for three minutes. The patient has now been in a semi-upright position for more than three minutes, so we'll start the passive leg raise test. A screen comes up prompting, would you like to start immediately from the challenge stage? Because we've had stable baselines for the last three minutes, we'll say yes. It now says, accommodate the patient to supine position and elevate the legs to 30 to 45 degrees. Once the patient is positioned with the head down and the legs up, we press next. In the top right corner, a countdown for the test commences, indicating that we have about two minutes and 45 seconds re remaining. The passive leg raise maneuver is equivalent to the reversible administration of about one unit of blood. This diagram illustrates the change in aortic blood flow over time with the passive leg raise maneuver and the administration of 500 mils of saline. An increase of greater than 10 percent in the stroke volume index following the bolus fluid test or the passive leg raise test suggests the patient is on the ascending limb of the Frank Starling curve and is fluid responsive. The passive leg raise test has just been completed. The results are presented in a table similar to the bolus challenge test results seen previously. The change in SVI for this patient is 7.2 percent. An increase of more than 10 percent would have suggested that the patient was fluid responsive. This result does not support the administration of additional intravenous fluids. The result is also displayed in a Frank Starling curve, showing the patient is on the flat portion of the curve 
and unlikely to benefit from an increase in preload. The stroke volume index is perhaps the most versatile indicator of fluid responsiveness. A normal stroke volume index ranges from 33 to 47 mils per meter squared per beat. A stroke volume index of less than 30 suggests that the heart is underfilled and the patient may benefit from additional fluid administration. An SVI of greater than 70 suggests the patient's heart is full and unlikely to benefit from additional fluids. The NICOM is able to monitor and calculate the variation in the stroke volume over time. Three criteria must be met to use the NICOM stroke volume variability as an indicator of fluid responsiveness. One, the patient must be in normal sinus rhythm. Two, the patient must be under controlled mechanical ventilation. And three, it applies only for patients with a closed chest. An increase in variability of the stroke volume of greater than 10% suggests that the patient is on the ascending limb of the Frank Starling curve and is likely to increase their stroke volume, cardiac output, and organ perfusion with additional fluid administration.